What's up, dogs? It's the Saber Wolf Finder 4. I got the Rage and Surf Japanese set today to finally review. A very, very late review, but they say better late than never. I was really busy with 151 and all the other videos that I make, and it sort of got pushed back and pushed back. But we finally got this today. This is going to be the cards here are going to be included for our Paradox Rift English set. It's going to be this set, and I think the next one or who knows what they're going to include. So we'll start things off with an EX right from the start. Frostless EX here. So cool, cool thing. I think this might be the first major special card Frostless ever gets, ever got from Gen 4. And it's one of those, you know, crystal, whatever, Terra Pokemon. So it's going to be a grass Pokemon, even though it's not grass in the games. 250 HP. Uh, kind of weak if you think about it for a stage one. Doesn't even have free retreat. Damn. And it's got just out of reach when this Pokemon is in the active spot and is knocked out. Flip a coin. If heads your opponent takes one less prize card for that KO. Okay, so it's one of those gimmick Pokemon. Now, if you do get this off, then obviously it's strong because it's like you went out of your way to kill a big HP Pokemon that's just a regular Pokemon. Uh, not not that spectacular to be honest. I mean, in my opinion, regular stage two Pokemon should have in the range of 200 HP plus anyway. But I guess that's what you get. And then the Frost Bullet attack uh, it does 140 damage and then 20 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. Mate, are you serious right now? So this is a really weak card. I, I gotta say. They went out of their way to make a special Frostless card, and they made it so weak. I mean, it just really, it's going to max out at 160 damage, basically, for two. That's not good at all. You know, and if they block the bench damage with Manaphy, you just do 140 for two. It's just very unimpressive. I mean, yeah, too bad. I, I can't really think of uh, any major use for this card. I mean... The ability is a coin flip, so you're gonna need a, a way to, I guess, to control coin flips to make this sort of good. I'm not sure. And then the attack is just plain and simple. It doesn't have any special trick going for it. The HP isn't too high. Anyway, whatever. Okay, off to a great start. And that's the only grass Pokemon, it would seem. Is this really gonna be the only grass Pokemon? Usually that's how it goes. I mean, they do the Pokemon by type. So grass Pokemon are usually first. Anyway, we got Lapras next. Oh god, they didn't even bother to translate this one. Wow. Um, okay, I don't know what it does. It just, it's not translated. I mean, I, I would guess it's ass, as all the regular Pokemon usually are. 50 for 2, and then the first attack. It might be searching something, who knows. And we got Remoraid. This thing doesn't do anything either. And Octillery, so ability Pokemon, I really like the artwork, it's clay artwork, which, I mean it looks like it's clay, I mean Octillery got clay artwork before in the past too, I want to say, and it's chilling in a nice um, sea, like beach background, anyway, so Sushan Draw, once during your turn when you play this card from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, draw three cards. Seen this before, these sort of ability Pokemon don't end up being good because you only get the effect once. So you get them out, you just draw that three, and then that's it. You don't get anything else. It's much better to have something like Curlia or any of the other Curlia, I guess, Mimics, Zorog GX Mimics, where you discard one and you draw two, and you can do this every turn. So nobody's going to use this for this ability, I want to say. And then the attack... Turn your next turn, twice to attack, flip a coin, okay, yeah, filler, fill up bull crap. And we go into the snow runt. This one's water. So nothing special for you, still the low HP, like we are 20 years ago. And then we got Garchomp EX, so wow. Nice uh, Delta Species vibes for sure, reminding me of my Salamence EX from Dragon's Frontiers. So, Dragon Garchomp, that is a water Pokemon, because it's Terra. 
He's using a fighting energy too for the first attack. So attach the three fighting energy cards from your discard pile to your bench Pokemon in any way you like. So this is a million times better than the Frost Lass. So you do more damage, you grab a bunch of energies. And yeah, it's a stage two. But still, this is a million times better. And then the second attack, Sonic Dive, discard two energy from this Pokemon. This attack does 120 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. All right, now I'll admit this is more. The second attack is more of a joke. It's a snipe, but it's really weak, especially when you consider, you know, Garchomp C level X did like 80 for three snipe. Discard, too. I mean, insane. Anyway, so this is much much weaker. But I guess this thing is gonna be used to, to grab your ass energies. I mean. It gives me some sort of vibes like the Manectric, Mega Manectric EX, perhaps uh, Blaziken VMAX, where you don't do that much damage, you're a big evolution Pokemon and you grab energies. Uh, I don't know, I mean, 160, it's, it's solid range. You get two hit KOs and a lot of things. Things like Charizard survive with 10. God damn, the car's outside. But it's decent range. Um, water Pokemon, it's going to be weak to Lightning, so that's going to suck against Miraidon and Raikou. Has Fear Retreat though too, which is great, 320 HP, so it's a good Pokemon. Only the second attack is kind of average. And uh, it's kind of shit to be honest, I'm not going to lie, unless they've made a mistake. But if it's translated how it is here, it's just a 120 for 2. And then you got to discard 2 energies, yeah, it's weak. Everything else about it is good, though. Mantike. Heal 120 damage from one of your Pokemon. Costless. It's kind of weird. This is, uh, but I guess it, it, this is supposed to be like a baby Pokemon nowadays. Anyway. Palkia. Nice artwork. Are you going to be good, though? You may switch this Pokemon with one of your benched Pokemon. That's pretty weak. And then prize count. If you have more prize cards remaining... 164 3. That's not that good either, and you gotta be losing to get the plus. That's Palkia though. Wimpod. Um, yeah, nothing much to you. Galissapod. Water. Power Cross. There's 20 damage for each card in your opponent's hand. So, once again, this is an attack that we've seen before, and I guess this is a stage one. So it's much easier to pull off than the old Metagross from Ancient Origins that did this. I think there was another card. Um, what was your name? That ghost Pokemon from Gen 5 is escaping me right now. Damn, my memory is so bad. Golurk, that's right. That sort of did this too. I think it needed two energy maybe. I don't know. The problem with these types of attacks is... Eono, Judge, these sort of cards destroy your damage. I guess there's the Milotic that you can use, and then people use that with that um, Pink Hammer Pokemon, whatever it's called. So perhaps this might be something, but you're going to need to draw a lot of cards too to do this. Who knows though, I mean, works with one energy. Might actually try this out finally, because I didn't really get to utilize that Milotic. Then we got Dondozo. So this is, uh, yeah, it looks like a basic Pokemon. I think I've seen it before. Yeah, it's got high HP and it's just a basic 180 for five energies. Yeah, good luck. And uh, Goblin Ripple, look at the top five cards of your deck. Attach any number of basic energy to this dude. Okay, so it's it's trying to be self-sufficient, but it's still going to die in one shot. If you leave this active to try and grab energies, you're not going to live with 160 HP. This is the reality. I mean, I guess you could tech this in the Chien Pao Backscalibur decks and have a regular dude that can do high damage, but 5 water energies is just too much. There's probably better Pokemon that are going to give you that sort of uh, damage or close... Maybe it's not going to be 180, but close without needing so many energies. The idea is you want to soften things up. So this you can do two hit KO shit. Anyway, I don't know. We'll see. 
Chinchu and Lantern. Top card of your deck. Uh, you may return to the top. Okay. And then Lantern. If this Pokemon has water energies, it's going to do 200 for 3. So it's the whole put 2 lightning, 1 water, and you do 200. Not very impressive. It's going to die in one shot too, regardless. And, I mean, wow, that's it for... I was going to say the water Pokemon, but these guys were actually lightning. Sort of realized too late. They're water and lightning in the game. But anyway, so that that's all we got. I mean, Rage and Surf is the name, and that's all the water Pokemon we got. Alright. Got Plusle next. 10 damage for each damage counter already in your opponent's active Pokemon. Uh, maybe in some sort of decks that spread, you can use this to finish them off, but I don't know. It's going to die in one shot. It needs two energies to, to attack. Minin, that's very cute. Very cute indeed. Buddy Pulse, if you have plus on in play, whenever your opponent attaches an energy from their hand to one of their Pokemon, Put two damage counters on that Pokemon. You can't use the effect more than one. You can't... Basically, you can't do this more than once, I think is what they're trying to say. Okay. Now, this could have been a, a cool, cute little thing if the ability did stack, as opposed to just being once per turn. And if the cards were a little bit better, then it could have been maybe something... But on their own, they're not really going to make a regular Pokemon Rogue deck. I just don't see it. It's too bad because maybe maybe if it did stack and with a little bit more support, we could have had something here, like the Lunatone and Solrock deck. But I guess not, as always. And we got the Spider Duo. Just Flail. For each head, what? I think it might mean damage counters, but maybe that doesn't make sense. Whatever. Uh, yeah, Cerebi is really messing up so far. Uh, it's, by now, you would think they would have translated these cards properly. And then this dude, Electro Bullet, 30 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So it's 50 plus 30 snipe, 80 total. That's worse than Dawn Fan. And this Pokemon is worse in every other way, too. Zekrom. Rage and Thunder, 130 and then 40 damage to one of your bench Pokemon. Mate, this dude had the same attack, or I think he did 120 back then. But the original Zekrom from Black and White, that's what it did. That's all the improvement you're going to give them after 12 plus years. And then the first attack, 20 for 1, and then discard all two cards from the active Pokemon before doing damage. Yeah, whatever. I mean, why would I do this as opposed to just using Regieliki or just some of the other basic lightning Pokemon with Fluffies and shit? Doesn't make sense. And we got Tapu Koko EX. If any of your Pokemon were knocked out by damage, so 120 for... Two, and it's an EX too, goddamn. It should have been different. It should have worked with one maybe, but I guess it's an EX. And uh, the Extreme Current does 180. There's an effect down there too that they also didn't translate. What the fuck, man. So, I don't know, maybe it's if you do this attack, you can't attack next turn or some bullshit like that. We got uh, Gimme Ghoul. I think this is the first time I've seen this dude. It's chilling in a treasure chest. Uh, yeah, like those Castlevania enemies, anyway. Pretending to be a chest, but they're a monster. So it doesn't do anything from what I see. And uh, the other one. It's a coin flip attack, bullshit, okay, it also doesn't do anything. Then we got Glyce, Glygar and Glyce score. Flip a coin if heads, poison, put two instead of one, yeah, whatever. 
Weakling, weakling lie score. 120 HP with double retreat. Typical bullshit. So it does 40 for 1, and then the toxic scratch. 80 for 3. Flip a coin if heads. Poison. Put 2 damage counters in the Pokemon instead of 1. This should have been an automatic effect, like automatically you get the poison and the extra damage because this isn't an impressive Pokemon by all means. I don't, I don't understand why they just are so careful with balancing, weakening these regular Pokemon. Like if this thing did auto poison, everybody was going to quit playing Charizard all of a sudden and Arceus. I don't get it. I'll never get it, but... I do get it, like I've said, they do this on purpose. They want these cards to be filler. That's all they want. Control the opposition, they want to make sure these regular ass Pokemon are shit, and then the rule box Pokemon are good. I don't really understand it though, because even if this thing did 100 damage without a poison, it wouldn't be a good card, because it still needs 3 energies to do this, it still dies in one shot. So, who the fuck is going to use this to try and win a major tournament? Nobody. But they don't even at least try to make them okay. They make sure to make them shit. Alright, then we got a Fanfi and Don Fan line. Um, 80 HP, high damaging attacks, cute artwork at least. And then this Don Fan is worse than the Vivid Voltage Don Fan. So discard the two top cards of your opponent's deck. So it's all about deck destruction here. And then powerful spin, 160 for 3. And this Pokemon can attack during your next turn. Yeah, broken. Broken, 160 for 3. You won't be able to attack. I mean, I really don't see any reason to use something like this where you can use other fighting Pokemon. Like, even, even something like Claydol. Why would I use this as opposed to one of those basic fighting Pokemon that can do maybe 130 for 3 and they're just basics. I guess this helps you maybe get 2 hit KOs but not really. I mean it only, it only, the only Pokemon it gives competition to is something like Golem which is attack is almost as ass at 180 for 3 and it's an EX. Then we got Groudon. Unfortunately, I think I did read this card a while ago on Poke Beach, and I was sad as always. So, attach a basic fighting energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. You get no damage. They should have given us the Evil Toll effect. Grab them the Discard Pile and do damage too. These days, it wouldn't even be that good, but at least it would have been something. But no. And then Magma Purge, you may discard up to 4 energy from your Pokemon. The 60 damage for each card discarded in this way. So, you know what? Now that I look at this card, I mean, it's fixed. You can only discard up to 4. So the damage is going to max out at 240, basically. A bit sad. It's powerful though, but um, it's still, I, I would have liked if I could have just discarded as many as I want so that you can get one Hikeos if you got the right amount of energies. This is something that I could actually use with Claydol again. Go figure. So, maybe just for the fuck of it, when it comes out, I'll do this with Claydol because I love Groudon so much and I almost never get the chance to use it. I mean, I can't think of anything else. So, that's this dude. And then we got Gibble and Gabite. I guess these are necessary to get your Garchomp out. That's water. Nice artwork. Looks like it's chilling like uh, in an open, open cave sort of thing. Alright. And then the Gabite. Discard energy from this Pokemon. Ridiculous. And then we got Hoopa EX as a fighting Pokemon. God damn, that's so weird. So fighting that uses darkness energies. Who do you remind me of? So energy cross does 50 damage for each energy attached to all of your opponent's Pokemon in play. So this might be something to do a lot of damage to the Charizards. They usually get a lot of energies on the board. Um, you need two to do this though. And then the 
big attack. 200 for 3, this Pokemon can't use this attack next turn. Even this is better than Golem. It's so, it's so ridiculous. This is better than Golem EX, and it's just a basic EX too. I hate them for being so unbalanced. Like, back in the day, like once again, going back to Gen 3, obviously you had your better Pokemon and then your better decks, better cards than other cards, but things were in the same league. Like, you weren't going to get a damn EX that did 60 for 3, let's say, and then another one that did 80 for 3 for no cost. No, they did around the same shit. Everybody was doing 60 or 70. And if you did more, you had a sort of negative effect or something. God. You got Minya. It's been a while since I've seen this dude. I believe this is from... Uh, is it from Sun and Moon or X and Y? I don't even remember. I think it's from Sun and Moon. So a Meteor Propulsion, once during your turn, if you attach an energy to this Pokemon while it's on the bench, you may switch this Pokemon with your active Pokemon. And then Gravity Tackle, 20 damage for each, colorless in your opponent's retreat cost. Yeah, who the fuck is going to use this? What's it supposed to do? Even with a big retreat on the opposition, you're not going to do a lot of damage. I don't get it. You got the crab dude again, not doing shit. This Pokemon is affected by any special condition. 190 for two, okay. Never mind what I said. But I mean, you still need something very specific to make this work. Like, you would have to use this with, um, I think it was the Ariados that made both Pokemon poisoned. Yeah, unless it's grass. So then you can do 190 for 3, or for 2, and then in Expanded you got the DC, so you can do that. But I mean, they wouldn't even be able to do this in Expanded, because the that Ariados is from the X and Y era. So you're going to need a different card that maybe I'm not thinking of. Nothing really spectacular though anyway, it's going to die in one shot, the typical stuff. Then we got Flamingo. I always want to say Flamingo, but it's Flamingo. Uh, 20 damage for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Okay. Max is out at 120, I guess, for two. And then pack 30 for one. Whatever. I guess it could have been worse. At least this is somewhat usable, even if it's not going to be very good. Then we got another Gengar. Jesus Christ. Dude, are you fucking with me? We've probably seen like five Gengars in this era so far. It's either this or between the Sword and Shield era. Jesus. They gotta slow down. Like if I ever make a set review on Gengar, which I was gonna do, but I, I passed it for some other Pokemon. But now if I, if I would do this, it'd be hell. There would be so many copies, so many different prints. So draw a card, it's not even free, bad HP. Good artwork once again, but I got Haunter 2. Asleep 2 for 40, that's bullshit. And then a stage 2 Gengar with the eternal 130 HP and 1 retreat. Man, this is comedy. This is just such comedy, man. You know what? This is such comedy that this is what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm about to do. Let me just find a way. <sighs> Fuck's sake. Because this is such comedy. I need I need to do this. Card decks. Gengar. Gonna go all the way down. Gonna go all the way here. Let's keep going. Gengar Prime from Triumphant. Freaking 13 years ago. 130 HP free retreat. You got this dude, which didn't improve, but same idea. 130 HP free retreat. 
You got a few other ones. This dude, newer card, Crimson Invasion, 130 HP, favorite fate. And you keep going. Okay, yeah, and then you get shittier and shittier and shittier. 130 HP, one retreat. Up to all the way here to this fucking dude. Newest Gengar. Worst retreat. Still the same shit HP from 12 years, 13 years ago. And then people get mad when I swear and I yell and I complain. So what the fuck do you do? You got Nightgate, once during your turn, you may switch your active Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. That's it. So you got the damn... Almost like a Keldeo, but not really. You get a free switch, so it's a bit stronger. Alright. I think other Pokemon do this too. Um... I think there was another stage too, but anyway. And then you get a shitty 100 for 2 attack with auto sleep. This is what the latest Gengar has to offer. So, not only do they keep printing these cards, they make them shit too. <sighs> anyway, now I gotta go back. Ridiculous, man. Absolutely ridiculous. I'm never going to touch a new Pokemon booster box again. I haven't done this in years. And it's never going to happen if this shit doesn't change. Alright. So, Absol. Uh, this is kind of wacky artwork. I'm not the biggest fan. Um, draw cards until you have five. And if you wish, you may discard as many cards from your hand before drawing shit. Yeah, I see. I see what it wants to do, but um, I would have liked if it was up to six at least, because it needs an energy, and the Cleffa does this better. Your turn is still gonna end, and then the enhanced slash twenty, and then if this Pokemon has a tool, you do eighty for two. Yeah, congratulations. You're also a weakling. Oh my god, where the hell are we? I'm gonna grab a, a drink real quick. Guys, I kindly ask you leave a like on the video, perhaps leave a comment on the card that you love or hate the most. Uh, just helps with the algorithm. Making these set reviews is hell. Uh, I gotta talk for at least an hour uh, without much of a break. And uh, yeah, they don't get a lot of views too. So do me that solid. Then we got the Scraggy. Doesn't do much. Nice artwork once again. I have almost want to say that I've seen this before. They reused this, but probably not. And then the Scrafty. Damn, I want to say the same thing, but maybe I'm just losing my mind. So during your next turn, the defending Pokemon, basic Pokemon cannot attack. So this is going to be one of those wall Pokemon, but it's only against basics. Nowadays, you probably want to block evolution Pokemon, but I guess it is going to stop... Uh, Things like Miraidon and Raikou, perhaps a few others. Um, okay, that's it. Nothing else good. We got Evil Tall. So yeah, this is gonna be probably a worse Evil Tall than the one from ten years ago. Once again, so Cross Cut. If your opponent's active Pokemon is an Evolution, ninety for two, and then Dark Edge one twenty. You discard energy. Not that impressive stuff, but uh, it beats some other Pokemon. Like the regular Pokemon that we see, like Gengar and shit. It's so ridiculous. This is this, a basic Pokemon with 130 HP. Gengar is a stage 2 with 130 HP. It's so crazy. I'm never going to understand this, ever. I understand it's because, you know, these are the legendary ba legendary Pokemon that are basic. So they give them the 130 HP. They've been doing so since 2011. I get that. But 
you gotta make the stage twos good. You have to make them fucking good. For fuck's sake. Let's do it again. Some of these artworks are really repetitive, like this little fox thing. Anyway, the artwork. Okay, so, th so this one is different on this thief wall. I haven't seen this before, but the other one, it almost felt like I've seen it before. So when you play this card to evolve, look at the opponent's hand, choose two energy cards, shuffle them back into the deck. So, okay. Only control decks would make use of this, use of this, but they're careful not making those broken now. I've noticed that instead of discarding, you put the shit in the in the deck and hand shit like that. So you can't run out of them. So it's almost like these are useless cards altogether now. But I'd rather they go in the deck rather than get discarded. It's just better, more balanced. All right, Jirachi, Stellar Veil. If an effect of an attack from an opponent's basic Pokemon will put damage counters on any of your bench Pokemon, prevent that effect. So this is basically the card they made to counter Sableye. Yeah, I would have liked if you gave us this card uh, many sets ago. Not when Sableye is not going to retreat now, but... He's had his run, let's just say that. Um, next rotation. Yeah, Lost Origin is going to survive. But still. And then the inner, inner charge, search your deck for up to two basic energies, put them into your hand. So it's a support Pokemon. It stops Sableye and maybe something else that's going to do this. But it's got to be a basic Pokemon, which is some bullshit. It should have stopped everything. If we're going to play this... Make it a widespread effect. Don't make it be like so specific so that it's only gonna counter Sableye. It would, would have been good if it could counter New TV Union and then the other motherfuckers that do this. I mean, it, it's, it's a specific effect as it is. Just make it cover all the ground at least. So if it's just gonna stop Sableye, it just limits the use and then people will think okay should I tech this in or it doesn't cover as much ground anyway got Pharaoh seed nothing and then Pharaoh thorn this third takes 30 less damage from attacks with 140 HP useless and then Pokemon use spinning needle uh, 150 but then 50 for two okay so bullshit Artwork is also kind of repetitive. This sort of zoom on this dude. Do blade and onage. <sighs> Nothing. <sighs> True commitment. This Pokemon receives no damage from attacks from your opponent's Pokemon EXs or Vs. So this is another wall Pokemon like Mimikyu. But it is a stage two. So we can build a deck around the student attack maybe. But I doubt it's going to be that good. The attack is weak. 120 for two. That's so shit. But it says it's not affected by any effects. So this is always a good effect to have. Ignoring shit. But I mean this is a stage two Pokemon. So usually they don't have anything that they can't hit. Thankfully. Um, uh, yeah, I wish the damage was better. I wish the HP was better. Stage 2, 150 HP is a joke. <sighs> better than Gengar, but still a joke. But, I mean, yeah, you, you can do this, I guess, instead of just Mimikyu. I don't know what else to say. I, I really wished stage 2s were just good in general. We didn't need to have this sort of bullshit effects to just uh, wall them completely or attack for free with Nido King sort of thing. Just make them conventionally good. And we got Zacian. So a bunch of legendary Pokemon in this one. So attach a basic metal energy from your Discapod to one of your bench Pokemon. Yeah, of course they're going to make this better than Groudon. Damn, and then 
Brave Blade, 130 for 3, can attack on your next turn. So, this is, yeah, kind of a solid, you know, reliable, new revamped version of Evil Tall from back then and other similar cards. You got your energy attack, cheap attack that gets you energies, and then another standard attack. Unfortunately, these sorts of attacks don't keep up with the times. I mean, back in the day, that basic evil talk could take a hit. It could put in some work. And then you did 30 on a Pokemon with 180 HP. That was something. These days, doing this on Pokemon with like over 200 plus HP, 250 plus, it, it doesn't do it. It's not the same. It's just nothing makes sense in the modern Pokemon TCG in terms of balancing things. You get this ugly ass worm. Draw two cards, 20 for one. And then if there are three or fewer cards in your deck, it does 240 for three. Yeah, not exactly my goal to deck out just to do 240. And then Goldengo EX. Okay, so I'll be honest. I've seen this sort of card before, and I almost thought that is this like a fake card, like some sort of a Pokemon card maker shit? Because it just is this even a Pokemon, like an actual Pokemon in the games? It's a bit weird to me, but could be. So it's uh, a stage one apparently. It evolves from somebody. I don't know what the fuck. Okay, no, I know what that thing is. It's that little worm thing that was in the treasure chest. So I guess it evolves into a golden cheese string thing. I don't know what the fuck is this supposed to be anyway. Once turning your turn, you may draw one card. If it's in the active spot, draw two cards instead. So this isn't anything like the barrel level, but... It's draw. This is a an attacking Pokemon too. Let's see. Make it rain. Discard a number of basic energy cards from your hand. Two damage for each card discarded this way. Wow. Okay, so yeah. This is pretty good. It means it's going to be the main draw card in its own deck. Help you get energies. You dump them. And then you do a lot of damage. So I think a lot of people are going to use this. They're going to like it. I'm sort of digging it as well. It's one of it, it's build it yourself, ready to go. Ability works with the attack, attack works with the ability. All you gotta do is just grab energies in your hand all day, dump them, grab them back with energy retrieval, superior energy retrieval, you got a deck. So pretty simple. Now you're gonna need to dump a lot to do real damage, like you have to dump four to do two hundred and 6 to do 300 but you get in that range where you do kill significant things and I mean once you get Elder Goss out once you use like energy start using the energy retrieval superior energy retrieval shit like that it's not that difficult actually um, I gotta be honest so this is kinda powerful I mean his ability helps you draw as well what else do you want? So, so far this is the most uh, competitive Pokemon that I've seen from here. Uh, really, when you think about it, I mean, that was it. Garchomp was good. And then everything else was either just generic or shit. I mean, yeah. Then we got the Bombardier EX as well. This bird, really serious it seems. So fast carry, you may use this attack even if it's your first turn. Search your deck for three basic Pokemon and put them onto your bench. Nice. So this gives you an incentive to play first now and do this. We got the Ditto as well from 151. I see a dimension. Um getting created here. I actually need to check though, can Ditto get a Pokemon like this? I gotta check, but... 
Yeah, and I mean, you can still do this if you play a second. Get a bunch of Pokemon, put them onto your bench. Uh, there is a lot of risk having this active, you know, because 200 HP, you still die easy. Just to grab Pokemon. We got a lot of cards that let you get Pokemon. A lot of people favor the VIP pass anyway. And then the Shadow Wind attack, you may put this Pokemon and all cards attached into your hand. So you can save it and do some damage. Maybe that's good. I mean, we got the Turbo DC. Who knows? Might be something. Uh, I'm interested in it, though. Even for just the first attack. I mean, you never know. It doesn't really have any limitations. It doesn't say they can't be uh, rule box basics and shit like that. You can get anything. So cool. Alrighty, and uh, we're almost to the end, thank God, because uh, they're making a lot of noise outside. Jesus. Uh, if you played a supporter card this turn, 140 for 3, yeah, but you don't have free retreat like your cousin. This is kind of uh, fucked up, anyway. Rare candy reprint, switch reprint, luxury cape. If the Pokemon this card is attached to doesn't have a rule box, it gets 100 HP. And if that Pokemon... Okay, looking at this fucking card really pisses me the fuck off. So, you're gonna attach this to a regular Pokemon. Okay? It's not gonna work on a rule box Pokemon. It's gonna get 100 HP. But then if it dies, your opponent takes one more prize card. What the fuck is the point of giving them help if they're just gonna be... Like a shittier rule box Pokemon then. What is the fucking point? Seriously, fuck Pokemon for designing these cards. You got TM Turbo Energize. The Pokemon that this card attached can use this attack. Such a day from two basic energy. Attach and revenge Pokemon, whatever. Oops, shit. And then you got the blind side. 100 damage to one of your opponents with a damage counters, whatever. And then we got the supporter cards, Larry. This dude looks like he's stoned. Flip a coin if head searcher deck for two Pokemon and put them in your hand. If tail searcher deck for one basic Pokemon and put it into your hand. So I don't see anybody serious using the supporter card. There's better options that are consistent. You got Chantal. Man, this card, this this character, she really has been only in like the Gen 5 Elite 4. That's it. So, it's her first card. I mean, yeah, I do remember <laughs> playing the Elite 4 all, all the damn time back then. Black and white and black and white too. Man, it's been so long since I've played a new Pokemon game. So what do you do? You also have to, have to flip a coin. If head switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with the active Pokemon. If tail switch your active Pokemon one of your bench Pokemon. So essentially what it is, is uh, a boss's orders if you get heads. And then if you get tails... You... it becomes a switch. Now, I don't really see, I don't think this is a very good card. I guess they've, at this point, it must be difficult. They gotta just do this little creative cards, even if they're bad, because they reprint the same cards all the time anyway. So they are running out of ideas, but I can't blame them. But here's the problem with this card. When you're gonna want to pull, you want a guaranteed pool like boss's orders or the little cross uh, switcher thing where you put play the two cards together and then you switch or if you're gonna do something like Pokemon catcher it's not your supporter for the turn so if you get tails you miss it's not really a big deal that's how those broken that card is even with the coin flip so you can still use something else to draw cards and whatever 
But if you're gonna burn your supporter to try and pull when you know that's what you want to do, you're burning your supporter to pull, and then you gotta flip a coin and then you get tails and then you switch. That's not what you want. So it really doesn't make sense. I mean, if boss's orders rotates out and then they don't print it, then this would be the only choice. But if that would happen, I don't think people would use it. So this is really sad, but this is going to be one of those cards that is never, ever going to see any serious play. And maybe I'll be proven wrong, but you can't have such a random effect as a side effect. I mean, if you don't get the heads, you just gain a switch. It just doesn't make sense to me, but it's a different card, so that's why they designed it. It's too bad, like, they give these new characters, or this chick, her first card, and they make it ass. And then meanwhile, other characters get all the love all the time. And you got this Rika chick. Looks like a chick, but anyway. Look at the top four cards of your deck, and put two of them into the hand, then shuffle the remaining two cards from the remaining... What? In your hand. Then shuffle the remaining two cards from your hand. I think it means the, the deck, the, the ones you revealed. Otherwise, it wouldn't make sense. Okay. So, unlike the last card we've seen, I think this is going to see a lot of play because it's pretty similar to Chorus. Now, I never used Chorus. I didn't use any of the Lost Engine decks. I couldn't care for them. Uh, that Chorus card, I do see it see play in other decks that have nothing to do with the Lost Engine. Might see it in Charizard, might see it in other random decks because what it provides you is it gives you the option to grab um, three things, three cards from five. So. It's not necessarily more straight draw than other cards, but it just gives you flexibility, it gives you the option. Now the other two go into hell, that's a bad side effect. And this is why I think this is um, similar, and people are going to use it, because you can do pretty much almost the same shit. Grab one less card, and then you reveal one less card from the options too. But the rest of the cards get back in the deck, they don't get in the lost zone. So... I do see people using this if they're using Chorus, and then when Chorus come, rotates out, I think this is going to replace it for those that like that card. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, something that's straight draw 4 would still be better, because then you can grab everything instantly. But uh, besides that, it just gives you a little bit of room to get what you want. Then we got the Parasol Lady. They wrote this wrong. Parasol, that's not how you spell it. Shuffle your hand into your deck, then draw four cards. If you use this card on your first turn, go in second, draw eight cards instead. I almost want to say I like this card, but unfortunately, it's very, very specific once again. Um, to be such a, a, a weaker Shauna and then... You're only going to rip this benefit the first time. It's not even the same as Lily, that, you know, you draw until you have eight, and then after that is drawn until you have six, which is still good. This is just... no. It should have been at least shuffle and draw five, uh, you know, the Sean effect. I mean, yeah, it would have been maybe you could say unfair against Shauna, but I mean, we've had formats where we had Shauna and Cynthia around. So, yeah, I don't... Or Shauna and... Uh, what's it called? Uh, what's the bitch's name? Marnie, okay. Yeah, I almost forgot about it. We've had formats where Marnie and Shauna was around, so yeah, you could say it would have been unfair for Shauna, but since when do they give a fuck about balance anyway? They make the Pokemon so unbalanced, and then they try and not make this better than Shauna. Whatever. And uh, 
Medical energy, the last card here it would seem, provides colorless when you attach this card from Pokemon heal 30 damage. Okay, I think I've seen that before in a different healing card anyway. And this is the Rage and Surf set. Now I'm not gonna lie, this wasn't a very impressive set. It was pretty lackluster. Um, the cards that really stand out as good cards are the Gold Dango EX. Garden Chomp, I guess Garden Chomp is a popular Pokemon, so maybe this set is going to be hot because of that. Look at this Groudon, man. Cool as all oh, fuck. This is so cool. It's so sad it couldn't be better. But I'm still going to use it if I get it, 100%. Not even if I get it, I'll craft it. It's not the TCG Online days. Now with live, we can build decks easier. Uh, the plus and mining, they could have been cool. This one is uh, upset, this one is happy. I guess to reflect their uh, energy type, minus and positive, negative and positive. Supporter cards, this, this luxury cape really pisses me the fuck off because it's once again just Pokemon giving us the middle finger. Just telling us, yeah, regular Pokemon are going to be shit. We don't give a fuck. Besides that, we get some reprints. Maybe they're going to be in our set too. I mean, my favorite card is Groudon, obviously. The full art. And uh, that's it. I mean, I guess the Galissapod seems kind of cool as well. Maybe we can make use of that. Nothing else, really. Frost last was shit. Tabu Coco and uh, some of the other ones like um, Hoopa. They're just kind of standard. They're not super shit. They're not super good either. Gengar is ass. Yeah, I mean, it was a small set. It's just a Japanese set. It's 60 cards, not even 70. So we. Finished with some good time today, thank God, because I'm dying once again. So this is the set review, guys. It's going to be for Paradox Rift. We're going to get some additional cards too, I'm sure. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this set review. Please leave a like, share the video, do what you got to do. Yeah, look at this. Look at this card, man. Very nice, Chantal. But they gave her a, a really just not workable effect. With the coin flip. Okay, this card was good as well. I forgot about it. So, okay, for such a small set, it wasn't completely shit. The, some of, most of the EXs, well, not most, but how many do we get anyway? Get okay, one, two, three. So, three are okay. Two are mm, all right. And then Frostlass is the worst, I'd say. So, not too bad. But I didn't really see many regular Pokemon just even have something going for them like a gimmick like Nido King at least just something anyway so that's it hope you guys enjoyed Saber will find you four and I'll see you guys next time what a